Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis alongside Stuart Patridge, and we are talking Ole Miss ball camp today. Stuart, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Appreciate you having me on, Stephen. Oh, yeah. You know, with, with us getting closer to Jackson Dart, seemingly stamping his – I don't know, his taking claim of the quarterback position because we all know that Lane Kiffin isn't going to announce one. Uh, It looks like from all accounts that Jackson Dart looks to be leading this competition. And everybody is talking about the transformation of a quarterback, from specifically Matt Corral, from year one to year two from Lane Kiffin's system. Now, you were a quarterback that went from – a backup in year one to starting and being the guy in year two. And I think your perspective on this would be just really good. What was that like? Well, I think the confidence you get, I mean, with each snap you take, uh, not only throughout the season, but then from one season to the next. So, I mean, you just, you know, the confidence you get. And the one good thing we've got going forward is we've got a pretty solid line coming back, a great running game. So that you get all those factors that play in, to building the quarterback's confidence. So, you know, and I thought uh, Jackson Dart had a good season last season. I think he'll have a good one this year. But definitely just the confidence you get, you know, yourself and your teammates and also the teammates have in you. The more snaps you get, the better you get, the more confidence everybody gets in you. So I'm, I'm expecting big things and looking forward to an exciting season. Yeah, and, and, and another similarity that you have with Jackson Dart is you had Deuce McAllister behind you. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, I, yeah. He's got Quinshawn behind him, so we even yeah. got the running game matchup. That's right. I can honestly say I had uh, both running backs that I had were both first round picks. John Avery, of course, got hurt uh, the first game of the season against Central Florida, which allowed Deuce to really play. Uh, he and Tony Canyon. So yeah, that's pretty good. Like I said earlier, it often helps to have some some confidence uh, in your running game. It takes a lot of pressure off the quarterback for sure. Okay, let's say the first snap in the game, Jackson Dart takes it. And what would you be looking for? Look, would you be looking at specifically that tells you that okay, Jackson's Jackson's going to be okay. He's got all the confidence in the world. <clears throat> right. Well, usually you can tell if Lane Kiffin's running down the sidelines, <laughs> yelling or you know, or upset with him, uh, because a lot of times from a, a fan's you know uh, point of view, you can't always tell really what's supposed to happen. It may look like it was a positive play and the coaches over there, you know, yelling at the quarterback. And, you know, from my perspective, like it did good. But what we don't understand is, you know, maybe that play was designed to be to be something else and missed the opportunity to really, you know, take advantage of the situation. So I think, uh, you know, if you see that, but if you see if the, the kind of the – the confidence in the quarterback, and that's not hard to tell. You know, if he's making good decisions with the ball, uh, you know, I think those things will be pretty evident uh, pretty early on. So, uh, and, and that just kind of goes with the, uh, like I said, get experience, taking snaps, and everybody coming together and gelling. So, uh, I expect that to be the case this year. The team as a whole, what, what are you hearing about the team as a whole? Well, I think, you know, as we mentioned earlier, we've got, a, you know, a lot of guys coming back that played a lot of snap, snaps on the offensive line. You know, clearly the running back position is going to be strong. Uh, so, I mean, I think we should, you know, that should really pace, you know, for the season. The defense, obviously, the new defense coordinator uh, should be exciting. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of new faces over on defense. So it'll be, it'll be <laughs> exciting to see, you know, how well our, our defensive players catch on to the new scheme and what happens there. I think the offense should, you know, with as many, much experience we have over there, they should kind of, you know, lead the, lead the team and the defense, of, you know, can, can, come, can come on and hopefully be strong. So we all come together as a whole team, unit. Well, <clears throat> just to change the subject here for a second, um, you front, come from an era where they actually had two-a-days and fall camp was fall <laughs> camp. We've heard stories about how Lane Kiffin is taking back contact. They're doing more practice day, a lot more walkthroughs, a lot more 
um, classroom time. What was fall camp like for Stuart Patrick? Well, it was pretty, pretty tough. Uh, you know, as any person, just like as we grew up and our dad and our granddads, man, you don't know how things were back, you know, back when. I will say this, when Tommy Tuberville, I guess it's just say Senator Tuberville, came on, I think part of what he wanted to do was, you know, kind of trim the fat and see who really wanted to be there. But I do remember the first day of two days under him, I think 23 people went to the hospital or the infirmary to get IVs. Uh, we might have even had some, some three days uh, those first couple of weeks. So it was brutal. Now, you know, a lot of folks say, well, the quarterback, he doesn't really have to, because we weren't having to, you know, uh, you know, get hit or take licks, you know, people down there doing Oklahoma and all that. But it was pretty, I remember it being pretty brutal and wanted it to be over, uh, wanted that first game to get here as soon as, as soon as possible, for sure. Even though he couldn't hit you whenever you were sitting there, what, what was it like knowing that Derek Burgess was on the outside coming? Yeah, pretty scary guy. Uh, I mean, even as a young man, he was, uh, you know, ferocious and so fast. Uh, you know, a defensive player that can run like that and strong. You know, uh, Derek is a heck of a player, heck of a guy, heck of a teammate. So, yeah, uh, when you see those guys on the other side of the ball, you definitely want to be their friends for sure. Yeah. It's like, hey, Derek, how you doing? Here, here, here's <laughs> yeah. breakfast, man. Here, here's sure coffee. They weren't, having, they weren't having a bad day, and they decided to, uh, you know, they forgot about, hey, don't hit the guy over there in the uh, yellow jersey. Sure. Yeah, because we had Bill Flowers on the show yesterday, and um, he talked about, hey, in two days and all that, when we were going through, you can almost count on people being at their wits, wits end. It, it presses all their Good buttons, and they're so irritating, yeah. irritated. Uh, and and I can't imagine, if you're doing three days, oh yeah. my goodness, I can't um, imagine the was, fights that were breaking out. Yeah, pretty frustrating. And a lot of hit, and I can remember we see, uh, a lot of times we'd start practice off with like inside, which is you know, just the interior line and just banging, handing the ball off and like, you know, a hundred, you know, I saw Bill's interview, you know, it's a hundred, 105 temperature, but the humidity is like trying to breathe through, you know, just, you know, full pads. It was, you know, it definitely separates the men from the boys for sure. All right. So what do you think the next goal is for this Ole Miss team as they get ready for Mercer and on down the road, get ready for Alabama? Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, especially as we get closer to the Mercer game, really on the offensive side of the the ball, really cleaning up any mistakes, being sharp, you know, know your assignment, you know, know what you're supposed to do, and carry that on into the first game. You know, no stupid penalties, no delay of games, no jumping off sides, execute, you know, all four quarters, because that's what it's going to take, especially this year as opposed to last year's schedule where we had a chance to – you know, kind of build our momentum, win a lot of games. I mean, we're getting to the thick of it pretty early <laughs> and play some, you know, some some tough football. So that's that's why it's so important right now that everybody gets on the same page. Everybody, you know, you get the confidence in one another uh, and, and play mistake-free football. You know, so all we're doing is giving high fives and uh, the coach is running down the field to give high fives and not – getting in somebody's ear because they made mistakes. It's so important on both sides of the ball uh, that we, you know, that we're really here during fall camp. And I hope that's the case where, we're, you know, that everybody's, you know, knowing what they need to do, came in in shape and ready to you know, win some football games. And some people that um, might not remember the last time that we had you on, Stuart, and I'm, I was wondering if you could tell the story again um, – <laughs> For, for the new audience that came in, the 97 Egg Bowl, the pregame fight. Yeah. Uh, just kind of just kind of walk us through that. Uh, well, I mean, it, what kind of makes this story good is, if you remember the year before, I got sacked like 12 and a half times. I mean, we put Gregory Favors in the NFL, six of them <laughs> by him. So, you know, I'm kind of, <laughs> you know, it had rained, like, you know, the junior year, we're playing in water two feet tall in the end zone. So just every quarterback's worst nightmare. So fast forward uh, to the Egg Bowl this year. I mean, it's a it's a big game. State's number 15th in the country. Both of us have had excellent seasons. You didn't have as many bowl games. And so whoever won this game was going to get to go to a bowl game. We were coming off probation. All the things that build up to like, you know, you know, when you're a kid, you know, playing in the backyard. 
So I'll never forget. And when we're the skill guys always come out first. And so we're looking back, you know, I'm facing their, their locker room that we all came out of in the end zone. And so we've just got, you know, I'm, I'm going down here warming up and I see their group, they're kind of their last group of guys. And boy, they start sprinting around the corner. I'm like, oh man, they're really fired up. And so then I turn around and I look and the receivers had lived, had, they, were, they were already fighting. So I didn't realize that. And so, of course, you know, you turn around and I see John Avery over there and they've got him. And so I run down there. And it's one thing about, you know, size wins in, the, in a fight on the football field. So you don't want to be anywhere near. Uh, so Coach Pinocchio you know, comes up there, you know, grabs me and John and we get out of the way. But yeah, I was like, God, they sure are fired up. <laughs> I didn't realize that they were already having a fisticuff back there. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah um, how far, like, the incident, um, what is it, Deuce McAllister and all that? That was the uh, famous yeah. moment. for the, How far away from that was were you? Yeah, it was, that kind of happened. By that point, uh, you know, the fight had, had broken out pretty good. And the problem was it wasn't like a fight during the middle of the game where it was just a few players – in the refs and, you know, not everybody, but the problem was this happened before the game. And so it was so spread out and not all the coaches were out there and, you know, nobody was expecting any kind of fight. So it kind of got to be pretty, you know, people were fighting all over and, you know, it's kind of clustered, so to speak. And uh, I hate it for the, <laughs> the guy that got hit because he was actually a recruit, but he had, he was from high. so he had on, uh, yeah, they had the same colors. Yeah, at State, and I'm guessing he was trying to, to break it up. You know, well, Deuce didn't know that. And so it was unfortunate, uh, you know, for both the incidents. And of course, uh, anyway, he got that was kind of on the other side because where it started, the receivers uh, kind of back behind we were, it all started over there. But then you had the running backs and the tight ends. And like I said, it kind of just, you know, it was pandemonium and melee. So. Luckily, nobody got hurt or got thrown out of the, of the game. People don't, people don't realize. They always talk about how toxic the rivalry got during the mid-2015, 2016, that time yeah. frame. But your, your, that fight was the end of about a 12-year period where there were three bench-clearing brawls in that oh, game. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. I, like, I saw one. I think it was when Tom Luke was playing quarterback. Yeah, in 91, I mean, yeah. it was a sure enough – I mean, it was, you know, as far that as was, fights, that, that was pretty good. One. That was like um, 20 to 20. They were just – everybody just squared up down the field. That's that right. One. It was kind of like they had a fight line. I mean, it yeah. was you know, throwing me in out there, you know, throwing blows through face masks. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. so th this rivalry has always been a special one and I always laugh whenever people say, oh, this thing has gotten too toxic. No. Until you know. you've lived through that era, <laughs> no, it has not gotten too toxic. That's right. That's a pretty tough – Pretty tough, uh, pretty tough times. So. Yeah, seriously. Anyway, thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Stuart, thank you so much for coming on the show, and I hope we can do it again, buddy. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. You're doing a great job too, man. Keep it up. All right, thank you. Hotty toddy. Hotty toddy.